All right, I guess we can start. If I was falling down from a building and I reached out with my right hand and grabbed a cable and I reached out with my left hand and grabbed another cable, what would happen to me? I'll repeat the question again. If I was falling from a building and I'm halfway down this 10 story building, I reach one hand out and I grab a 240 volt DC, uh, not even, doesn't even be DC. If I grab an AC cable and I grab another AC cable, two different AC cables, what happens to me? You get shocked. Really? Why? I don't know. Why? Because they're different cables. Okay. And they should have different voltage. Um What if I fall down and I grab the same cable? I grab one cable. You wouldn't be electrocuted. Why? If I'm, if I'm the guy falling and I've got a cable hanging in the air, I've got an AC cable hanging in the air, and I grab onto that cable. Shouldn't the current pass through? Shouldn't the current pass through me as well? Isn't it not the most direct um, way to be grounded? No, no, this person's hanging in the air. Yeah. So it's not going through him into something else. All right. So this comes to the question of what is grounding? What does grounding mean? You're touching the ground and you're touching the table. But why, why is ground? Why would touching the ground change anything? It would go through you into the ground. Why would it go through me into the ground? The ground or the earth has an electro something field. As a what? It's like a like a, there isn't there um electric poles to the earth too? No, do you remember last chapter we talked about gravitational fields? And how if you keep adding more and more stuff into, if you add more and more mass together, the gravitational field will get bigger. If you keep adding 
um, electrons and protons and electrons and protons and electrons and protons. While you're adding more charge overall, if I had a mil if I had one electron and one proton, and then I added another million electrons and a million protons, which one has more charge? They have the same. There would be no change because they cancel each other out. Yeah. They cancel each other out. So you have some, you have a you have generally for large collections of electrons and protons, the charge generally goes towards zero. So Earth, the Earth that we're standing on is generally about zero voltage. There is no potential difference there because all the electrons cancel each other out. And because everything is touching everything else, and the electrons theoretically can move through it, you get by and large a zero voltage. Which means if this is 240 volts and this is zero and I was to add a cable and I was to add a actually I'll put it I'll put a line through that so we know it's zero. If I was to add a cable from this guy's foot until it touched the ground, what would happen to him? Yeah. What? He get zapped. He gets that. This is called a, a grounding. This is a phenomenon called grounding. This is why. Yep, it would zap through him. This is why when you are doing any work on a electrical item, you should always wear. Just a minute, just a minute. Guys, I'm in the middle of a lesson. Can you be quiet? No, 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 Benny. Not, not that quiet. Zero noise, thank you. What do you should you always wear if you're working on something with high voltages? Rubber boots. Rubber boots. Rubber is not very conductive. So if you have if you have a rubber boot or a rubber sole, I think is what they, is what's the important bit. So sneakers would also work here. The rubber in the sneaker will keep the charge from passing through you and into the earth. Oh goodness, that's the most horrible foot I have ever seen drawn by a human being. Anyway, the idea is that if you have if you have any electrical current going through you, it should not go through the rubber sole of the of the shoe. This is what you would call what do you call this, Yadam? Now the zap does not happen, whoever's drawing that. It's a what tour? A capacitor? An alligator? What's the term that they use? You know? Yeah. Something that something that keeps charge from moving. Not a zaptor. What keeps the charge from moving? Uh, uh... Is it a resistor? Wait, 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 are you asking what makes the charge move? If I have a charge over here and somebody's touched that charge and it starts going through them and it gets down to their feet, yes. but their feet are in a rubber boot. Yeah. That rubber at the bottom of the boot is called a Insulator. That's right. 
Yeah, okay. I was confused for okay. a sec. What's the difference between an insulator and a resistor? And a what? Resistor. What's the difference between oh. an insulator and a resistor? Uh, cover resistors? Yes, we're covering we covered it, resistors. Wait, wait. Uh, is insulator the one that does not allow it to react? An insulator doesn't allow charge to go through at all. Uh -huh. And resistor? Resistance is measured in ohms. And what was Ohm's law? Did somebody write up Ohm's law? Tim, do you remember Ohm's law? Um, resistance is equal to is it resistance or is it power? Oh goodness, we may have gone the wrong direction here. That's there. No, we cover we cover resistance. Did we cover resistance? We had Ohm's law equals on page five hundred and thirty-five. If you can't remember, it's on page five hundred and thirty-five. What is Ohm's law? Isn't that for current? It's current, voltage, and resistance. They're all, they're all interrelated. I want to know what the difference between Voltage divided by current. Hmm. Okay. Voltage by current equals voltage divided by current equals resistance. Is that it? Um. Are we still trying to find the answer to the question? Yes, at the bottom of page 535. Okay, so voltage divided by current equals resistance. So do you need to have some current to have resistance work? Yes. Yes. You need to have some current to have resistance work. If there is no current, then the thing is an insulator. Cool. Can you see the difference? If my current is zero, my voltage is not measured in resistance anymore. It's not relative to resistance. There's no current flowing. If there's no current flowing, there is no resistance. It's completely and utterly insulated. You get it? This is why most, most devices have, uh, for anything that consumes power in an electrical circuit diagram, is that they will write it. They will write it in terms of a resistor. They will they'll have a little resistor symbol to go in the diagram. So that little there will be a resist there will be a symbol for a resistor in the diagram where you have power being used. Capiche? If I had something that was say, how do we determine your amount of energy? We determined energy, the amount, sorry, not energy, we determined the amount of electrical power. So if I gave you something with the power is equal to the current, 
times the voltage. And this is measured in watts. Okay. If I give you the power of a, let's say it's a 100 watt light globe. How do I get rid of this silly guy here? Let's get rid of this. If I have a 100 watt light globe, uh, I don't want, do not try a 100 watt glove, that would be painful. Um, and you don't know your current, but you do know your voltage is 240. You can work out your current there. What would be your resistance? What's the resistance of that light globe? Um, Hanby. Hanby, are you there? Hello, Hanby. Yeah. Yeah. What's the resistance of that light globe? While we're waiting for Hanbi to get through that, can I get Hyorim? Can you do another equation for me? Yes. 100 watt globe equals the current you don't know times 110 volts. I'm curious, and I haven't actually done the equation, I haven't done the math on this yet so, that, yet, so I'd love to know. What's the resistance of this light globe if it's 100 watts but it's at 110 volts. You know, we could make this a lot easier. I'm gonna change this completely. Sorry, I'm gonna change this so that we don't have to do a lot of math thinking. Let's just make that an easy 200 volts and I'll make that an easy 100 volts and we'll see what the differences are. What's the current going through the 100 watt globe at 200 volts, Hanby? Hello. Yes. What's the um, current going through? Um. Okay. So this is the this is the hundred watt light globe. It's yeah. got it's got two hundred volts. It's a hundred watts. What's the current? How many amperes of current is going through? Oh. Uh, How much? Um, zero point five. Are so you zero point five amps? Great. Okay, so how much power? I'm uh, sorry. Uh, we can figure out the. Um, that's figuring out the power. We got the power. We have the volts. Now we have the current. Can we now figure out the resistance? Dylan, what's the resistance of this bad boy? Okay, resistance voltage divided by current. So the current is 0 0.5, so 200 divided by 0 0.5. 100? No, wait, is it 400? Sorry. No, you're div wait, what? If you're dividing something by a half, you're not dividing it by two, you're dividing it by a half, means you're multiplying it by two. All okay. right, wait, one half times. Wait, one half, two. Yes, yeah, it should be 400, right? 
Yeah, it's 400. Yeah. So it would be 400 ohms. Okay, your resistance for that 100 watt light club is 400 ohms. Is it still 400 ohms if you put it into a 100 volt circuit? Would it be different? Wait, wait, wait. How does that If you yes, Billy. Um, are you finding the resistance? Where I want to see what the resistance is of a hundred watt light globe if you stick it into a two hundred volt circuit. If you stick a hundred watt light globe into a hundred volt circuit, something else needs to happen. Um. So. Those uh, amps is watts divided by volts, right? Amps equals watts divided by volts, correct. This is correct. Amps is watts divided by volts. What am I supposed to answer? You're answering the one on the current for 100 volts. Yes. What is that? So, um, the current is one and the resistance is 100. The resistance equals how much? 100 ohms. Hmm, that's interesting. So what can you conclude from that? What can we conclude from that? Um, I don't know. Is your resistance, if you said you had a five, five, ohm, resi five ohm resistor, is it always going to be a five ohm resistor? Yes. Under any circuit voltage. It depends on the voltage. All right. So your circuit determines whether or not something will be it's a certain amount of resistance. Um, generally, if you have more resistance, it produces more heat. Generally. Anyway, that was the first part of this lesson. Um, I just want to reacquaint you again with the Ohm's law and the power laws. Uh, I'm just going to save this. How do I save? Yep, save that particular thing. Okay, and we're going to move on to the next thing I want to talk about, which is where's my annotate thing? There it is. I want to clear all drawings. Uh, I want to start with. I've only got half an hour left, so this needs to be quick. Now, remember last time we talked about turning power into from AC into DC with those one way valves? Well, and we're going to do something similar there. And we looked at what happens when you put one diode in. But what happens if you put two diodes in? This is not going to look right. That's going to be better there. Okay. And you can go over here. There we go. Okay. So this is the basics for a, a diode array. So Normally, a diode array looks something like this. Let me just get these. I wish you had a copy function in here. C 
So just going to try and draw these diodes. So the have a guess which direction they flow, Billy. Yes. Which direction do you think the di the electrical current flows? With the arrows that you're drawing? Yeah, it goes in the direction of the arrows. Okay. So which direction does charge flow from and to? The bottom to the top? No. If you're talking about an electrical field, your field lines will go from which direction? Negative to positive or positive to negative? Positive to negative. Positive to negative. Okay. So we're just going to start here. We'll start with red being positive. So you have the, the charge flowing this way. Which one does it go, top or bottom? Top. Yep, because it can go this way, it'll be blocked going that way. And then which way does it end up going out? Right. Yep. The top again. Yep, so that's where the positive charge goes out. All right. Now let's flip it. I don't even need to move the whole thing. Let's flip it this way. So now I have, now the alternating current's gone in the other direction. I'll change it to blue. And you now have on the other side of the cycle, it's going this way. Which way can it go? Up. Yep. And then it goes. Right. Yep. Wait. Yeah. That's what you do. And you need the bottom side of it for your negative flow. So this this will this will turn this into an Where's the, where's the normal line thing? Okay, this will turn this into a normally positive output. So it's always positive and that makes, makes this output always negative. So if you have this in a circuit, you suddenly have a positive and a negative terminal that's always positive flow and this one at the bottom is always negative flow. Remember, if you're having the positive going that way and then you have this connected in some way in a circuit, the electrons are gonna go all the way back this way. Okay, and then they're going to be traveling this way, and it will go, it will go, uh, when the circuit is going in one direction, it will allow, if, it, if this is positive charge on the right here, you, you have the blue, where's the blue arrow? If this is positive over here, it's not going to travel this way, it's going to go back this way. And if it's, in the other direction, if it's there, then it's going to go this way. Can you see how that keeps your keeps your um, AC circuit working perfectly and then turns it into DC? And this does not give you this does not give you the AC circuit that does it was the one that we showed the other day. So we have an AC circuit. Ah. Oh, why does it keep doing that? Practice makes perfect. No, I think it's mouse pad makes evil. I'm going to do one. Okay, stop. Do again. Ah. Okay, so this is your a AC output. Now, if you just had one diode, one diode would give you an AC output. Okay, this is your AC input. In fact, you know what I'll do? I'm going to give it so that they, we can see that these are going in opposite directions. So you can do it with this.
Okay, and then you'll have your, when it's flowing in the other direction, I can do this one. So that'll relate more to the drawings, or at least it'll relate better to the drawings. Okay. So. When you have one diode, it, you get an output that should look something along the lines of this. You will only get the top because it'll stop everything flowing back the other direction. That's all you'll get. Okay. This is one diode output. But if you put in this four diode arrangement, you will get this, uh, can I get rid of that? Yes, I can. You get this wonderful output where there's four, yep, one, two, three, four. You're not losing half the power. Any questions? Okay, I see there's a lot of questions. Those are not questions. No, it's still everybody being shocked at you saying 100 volts or 100 ohms. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Um, this actually will I not be, this particular thing will not be on the test test just to keep you from freaking out. Uh, okay, okay, never mind. Okay, it's just something that I, it's just something that I wanted to show to you that by using an array of diodes instead of one, you can turn the AC into DC that's much smoother. I felt like we didn't, ex I didn't explain that well enough. Okay. What is this diode made of? What is the what? What is this diode made of? What, what's it called? Resistor? No, a diode's not made of a resistor. No, no. What, what is this again? I forgot what it's called. It's a, a, the arrow symbol. Yeah, the, the blob. Okay. So diodes are one-way one valves for electricity. They allow electricity to go in one direction. I wonder if... I wonder if there's a good GIF. How do diodes work? Is there a GIF or a GIF? Is it GIF or GIF? Let's not start this conversation. <laughs> it's GIF. All right. If you choose to say GIF, then you have to say hamburger. I mean, who says GIF? I don't know. Everybody. This is actually really weird. I don't understand what these images are showing me. Okay, I, I honestly do not understand how this image makes sense. So I'm going to share this with you. But it, in all honesty, I am confused beyond understanding right now. Let's have a look at this. Okay, this is, this is an image for a forward bias in a, in a diode. So apparently you can, move, you can move the electrons going in one direction.
Oh, it's P region and N region. See, I don't quite understand how that works. And then there's other images that go like this. I don't know what that means. This one's even more confusing. What does it mean by there's holes? Depletion region. Okay, I'm not sure how they work. I just know that it's a one-way valve for electrons. Is that fair enough? Is anybody even listening? Yes. Yes. Okay, so when you ask me how does that work, if you ask me how does that work, Billy, I actually don't know. I just know that they function like one-way valves for electricity. Okay. What substance is it made of? Um, I don't know. I'm, we're watching these because Billy asked a question. Yes. Done with the um, thing now for today. Yeah, we're pretty much done. Unless any of you have a question. Okay. Thank okay. you, Mr. Hendro. Okay. We have a week and a half left of school. Imagine that. Yay. Okay. Are, are we the test? Yep, you're the test to... The test is due by Monday. Okay. Next week, Monday? Just get it done. No, this, this week, Monday. Uh, oh. Two people have already handed in. I feel like oh, Mr. Yeah. Hendro, can we go? Yes, you may go. Thank you, Mr. Hendro. Thank you, Mr. Hendro. Mr. Hendro. Okay. See you guys. Thank Say hi to Benji. I will. Guess what, Mr. Hendro? Another question? I'm still here. Yes, another question. It's always you and Tim. <laughs> ah, this is fun. Okay, back to the um the 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 electricity use of your house thing. So I found that it was fifteen thousand for one day. Yep. Is that normal? Don't know. Is it is it measured in kilowatts? Electricity work measured in kilowatt hours. Is fifteen thousand kilowatts hour normal? Who? Isn't that a very large amount? Is it? I think so. No, no, a, a day is 10,399. Uh, right? Sorry, say again. Oh wait, 10,000 is normal for a day. No, 10,000 kilowatt hours I don't think is normal for a day. I think that's a large amount. Uh, is it? Did I look at it wrong then? Yeah, you're probably looking at 100 kilowatt hours. 50 kilowatt hours is very large for a kampung house. Mm. What? Or I, I think for a normal house, you're probably looking at about 50. Okay. Like okay. Probably I got the answer wrong then. I don't know what no, happened. No, I think your 100,000 is off. I think your 100,000 is in, is in watt hours. If it's 100,000. I, I didn't say 100,000. It's 15,000. 15,000 would be 15 kilowatts. Okay. Let's just say it's 15 kilowatts per day. So yeah. per, mo per month is about 40, 450, right? And so it's 450 kilowatts times 600 rupiah. 600? 600 rupiah for one kilowatt. Electricity is cheap. This is one of the results of the Industrial Revolution is cheap energy. 600,000? No, 600 rupiah. Okay. Times? For every kilowatt. Times 450. Well, that's not much. Yes. Electricity is affordable. 270,000. Per day. Okay, now let's times it 30. 
Uh, no, it's not 270,000 a day. There's no oh. way it's 270,000 a day. Oh, uh, okay. So it's 480. Uh, for, wait, it's 450, right? If, so it's 400, 400, if it's 450 a month, if it's 450 watts a month, that's 450 times 600. That's... Wait, 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 wait. Like, re recap, recap. So uh, one day is one day is fifteen, right? If one day is fifteen, then your monthly fee is two hundred seventy thousand. That means per day it's about ten thousand rupiah for your electricity for the whole house. Okay, that's about right. Okay, two hundred seventy thousand. Okay, that's 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 good. That's good. Okay, now 10, what? Ten thousand rupiah a day for a house sounds fine. So my overall is two hundred seventy thousand. That is good. That's a very good. Okay. Okay, I'm not done. <laughs> I have so, to make a phone call to someone now. Okay. Ah, okay, okay. I'll ask Tim since Tim is so smart. Can you do it no. on the chat? Thank you, Tim. Bye. Uh, uh, see you later, Dylan. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. Yeah, Tim.